don't know. <laughs> I can't hear you. Now I can hear you. Hey, hello. Yeah, you're hearing me, I take it. Yes, I am now. Okay, what can I do for you, Kaylin? Well, I have a weird question. Um, today's my birthday, and I want to know if I cannot be here today. You don't ever have to be here. Oh, well, I felt like there was points involved with being here. Well, there generally are, Caitlin. If you really, really, really don't want to be here, just remember, test is on Tuesday. Tuesday? Yeah, I, I've been through both the presentations on solutions and acids and bases, and I feel pretty confident. Okay. Um, that I've got it. No, that's fine. Just make sure you know how to go from pH to concentration and concentration to pH. Okay. okay. All okay. you got to do, if you've got the concentration of the acid, you take the log, just hit log, type in the concentration, and you'll get a negative number. Change the negative number to the positive. The that's positive. your pH. Okay. okay. I feel confident on it. I've got all my all notes. Right. Okay. Okay. I have lab tonight as well, so I'm going to skip that. <laughs> that. To be honest with you, that one I'm even less concerned with. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it, it has a lot to do with moles. The first part of it is changing moles back and forth. Second part is stoichiometry. And third part is a hard part on their hard dimensional analysis problems. Okay. Yeah. I did the lab and I feel confident on that too, but we'll see how that goes. I'm sure you're going to be fine, Kaylin. All right. Okay. The, I think there's like eight, eight or nine questions, just flat out uh, word problem questions for the test. On the test. Okay. Okay. And we're stuck with the test on Tuesday. Yes. Okay. Good to know. I have to, I have to get it done because yeah. if I don't, I won't we're behind get, already. Uh, we're okay. If we get done okay. with this tonight, we're okay. Okay. Good. If we don't get done with it tonight, I'm slitting my wrists. <laughs> okay. Take care, Kaylin. All right. I wish you luck. Thank you. Have a happy birthday. Thank you. You too. Do oh, something not you too. <laughs> What's that? Make sure you don't do something silly. Oh, well, I'll do my best, but I won't promise. I Are will you, be here on if, Tuesday. So. Is, somebody, is somebody taking you out to dinner? Yes. Good for you. Where are you going? Um, Alto Mar downtown, I think. Good for you. I've never been there before. Uh, I've never been there either. Is it on beach? I think so. Good. Good for you. Enjoy yourself. Absolutely have fun. Walk All right. Thank you very much. Walk around the pier. It's a nice romantic little thing to do. Okay. All right. I will. Thank you. Take care. Good night.
wonderful. I just caught myself picking my nose on I have more to do. Nobody out there? Hello? 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 Echo? 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 I'm bored. Where's anybody at? Got lots to do tonight. Hi, Faith. Hello. 
Do you have anything you need to talk about? Um, I just wanted to ask for the a question for the lab. Okay. Um, Are we talking? So tell, no, we're not talking calorimetry. Okay, tell me. Talk to me. Um, we're doing the. Um, what is it? Um, I are don't you, have my paper on me. I are just you talking it. about the? Are you talking about tonight's lab? Yeah. Okay, we're doing. It's basically I'm, I conduct this like a workshop. The yeah. first section is moles, second section is stoichiometry, third section is uh, um, dimensional analysis. Okay, so for the first question that's typically on those laps, do we have to put anything there this time? I'm not, under, let, me, let me pull it up for you. Uh, okay. Okay, let me just get through this first. Okay. Of course, sig figs are going to be wrong. I live for sig figs. Okay. Sorry, I just am real close to finishing this one grade, I just wanted to get it out of the way. Uh -huh. Okay. Sorry, Faith. No, it's all good. All right. Um, I mean, classless. Okay. This is on the quiz. This is lab, right? Yeah. Um, which, lab, lab, that, which lab are you in, Tuesday or Thursday? Tuesdays. Um, I just wanted to ask about, like, normally the very first question that's like, type in any errors or extra credit. Yeah. Do we have like that for this lab? No, it's, so it's the can... last question, I believe. In this particular lab, I think it's the last question. Okay. Uh, I could be wrong about that. Okay, course content. I was getting lonely, Faith. Okay, and we're dealing with, you, you're talking about the moles and dimensional analysis lab right yeah okay so you were doing the quiz itself no it's a lab i'm sorry yeah it's it's the it's the quiz oh okay sorry all righty okay this is the question you're asking about, Faith? Yeah. Uh, again, just don't put anything in it. Okay, so normally normally for my lab, sometimes that question's like marked completely, like no points. It, is well, that it always is. If, okay. you count, if you count up all the points, the points, if you include this question, there'll always be one more point than than uh, the uh, amount of points in the laboratory. Oh, okay. So even if we don't get any points for the very first question, we could still get 100%. Right. What happens oh. is it's a part of the design of the quizzes in this software that they have to be given a point value. Okay. And generally speaking, uh, this is used as a place for me to uh, give extra credit. And I don't, in a um, dry lab like we have here, like we've had all semester, there's not really an opportunity for me to give extra credit because they usually use that to 
give it to somebody that's done very well on an experiment. Okay. Make sense? Yep. I was just asking because I normally see it like worth no points or it was just a quick question that I had. Yeah, that it, you're, you're, believe me, you are not getting penalized for, for it. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. You ready to get re ready right into action and do stuff today? Uh, we're going over acids and bases, right? And we're going to finish up solutions. Okay. I think, yeah. the, I think the only thing I have to do with solutions is to uh, uh, do some stoichiometry problems. Okay. And I may, I, save, I may save that till the very end anyway. Okay. Because I normally do my notes ahead of time, like before class, so I know what we're talking about. Well, smart, smart method to do it, Faith. I mean, I remember you saying that like either in our intro email or in the syllabus. So I've just been following it ever since. I mean, honestly, you, you've seen how I've been working the entire semester. I work pretty much off of my PowerPoints. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, if you have the PowerPoints in front of you, all you got to do is take small amount of notes as opposed to trying to take large amounts. Yeah. That's really the purpose of a PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. Really and truly, when these things were first created, you would go into a class and they would hand you a notebook and the notebook would have all the slides uh, already published in there. Amazing, isn't it? Yeah, my one of my old teachers, um, she used to, like back when I was in person for high school, uh -huh. she would put the, a PowerPoint and then they would have little notes on the side of each slide telling you like, where you can write down notes and it was like really nice. Yeah, you, you have that here too. Yeah, where you can like download the PowerPoint, do that yourself, yeah. Yeah, if you download the PowerPoints and choose like six slides per page, then mm -hmm. it will give you a place to put notes in it. Yeah. Hi, Jennifer. Hello, how are you guys this evening? Oh, I'm doing fine. You prepared to answer lots of questions tonight, Jennifer? Because I got to get this thing moving. I was going to say, if I'm allowed to, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate, believe me, I appreciate both you and Faith because there are times when I'm struggling and I got to have somebody that gives me the right answer. Mm -hmm. And I generally depend upon you guys. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Spencer, how are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? Peach, you came wonderful. Just happy to be here. <laughs> you prepared to, you have your sprinting shoes on, Spencer? Uh, if you want me to get them, I'll go grab them. <laughs> go grab them because we're going to be sprinting through this stuff tonight. Okay, sounds good. It's not that, the stuff is not that tough. Asses and bases pretty much follow what solutions are. Hunter, how are you doing? I'm pretty good. I'm gonna use the restroom and get a drink before I- Too much in. information. All right, good point. <laughs> if, I, if I hear the flush, then it will be way too much information. All right, I'll make sure to include that. Make sure you flush though. No, no, we- uh, Yellow, let it mellow. If it's brown, flush it, flush it down. Why did I need to know that? Those, those are island rules. <laughs> Can somebody explain to me why I needed to know that? Come on, it's uh, meet the, uh, you know, meet the parents or meet the fuckers. You ever seen that movie? Yes, I have. Yeah, it's from that movie. I don't know. I don't know why it stuck with me. <laughs> Anybody have any questions about what we're doing? What are we doing? Hi, Aaron. Aaron's being shy. Aaron. Yes. Hi. Hi. I'm sorry. I didn't. I didn't hear what you said. <laughs> I what said you hi. Said. Okay. <laughs> hi. <laughs> Good enough. You're going to be here the whole time this time. Uh, yeah, I was here the whole time last time. All right. I 
music playing, so I guess I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, no problem. We're just we're going to be working really, really fast tonight. Okay. I have to I have to get through acids and bases. Okay. Professor, the exam is next Tuesday, right? Correct. Yes. Okay. And it's yeah. going to be, I don't recall offhand, I think it's like uh, eight or nine problems. Okay. And you said it's all, we had to all type, type all of them out because, okay. Yeah. I took off work that day to make sure I had enough time. So I wasn't racing home and then doing it. <laughs> uh, That's just me personally. I no, just no, want to make sure I had enough time. Yeah. It'll be like it's been before eight to eight. Yeah. And I probably will, I probably will give you two hours or so to do the test. That's good. You say it was eight problems or how many something I like that. Oh, but it's a lot of math. That's why. That's why it's I going, going to be a lot of math. <laughs> it is going to be a lot of math. Uh, I'm going to stop sharing. I'm going to stop being sharing so I can actually look at the quiz to give you an indication. Stop share. Thank you. All right, quizzes. Exam three, there it is. Okay. Easy question. Starts off with an easy question. Uh, second question is not that difficult. Third one, if you practice, it shouldn't be that difficult. Fourth is easy. Fifth is, again, practice. Wait, what are you talking about? Quit the test. There are nine questions. Nine questions on the test. They're all problems. All problems, guys. Okay. Two more minutes. And I have eight people, nine people in there. Mariah's in here. Hope everybody has their sprinting shoes on, guys, because we got to get through this tonight. We will do it. Just have faith. I'll even be able to toss out a lifesaver for you, Hunter. What do you mean? <laughs> Nothing. There's a couple easy problems. I'll point them out. All right. You know, uh, the quiz, quiz 14, I did last night, and it was kind of like clicking. Good. Good. That's, that's great. Uh, you, have to, you have the homework. Basically... Basically, uh, um, I can't explain it other than the more practice you do, the quicker you get this, you get this involved, you know? All right, I'm going to get into, I am going to get into the last of the solution. The only thing I have to do yet in solutions I believe I ended up with dilution equations M1, V1. M1, V1 equal M2, V2. Is that correct, guys? Yes. 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 All right. Now, I've just given you another tool to put in your belt. Because haven't I told you if you have the volume of the solution and you have the concentration, all you got to do is change the volume to change the volume to liters and then take your liters and multiply it by your concentration. You get moles. You now have another way to get moles. So if I am doing stoichiometry, I got a whole bunch of crap here that I got to get rid of. If I am doing stoichiometry, remember, our first step to do stoichiometry is to find the moles of our known. If I have the volume 
and I have the concentration, I can get moles. What volume a 0.492 molar HBr will react with 25.00 milliliters a 0.540 molar potassium carbonate. All right, Victoria. Victoria's not there. Jennifer. Yes. Okay. Of these two substances, do I have an ability to get moles of either HBr or potassium carbonate? Yes. Which one? Uh, the HBr. No, I'm sorry, the, uh, the potassium carbonate. I, it's the potassium carbonate because yes. I have a volume of it and I have a concentration. So mm -hmm. I, can t I can make moles out of the volume and the concentration. Can't I, Jennifer? Yes. If I get moles of potassium carbonate, can I then tell you, can you then tell me how many moles of HBr you have? Yes. I've got a molar ratio. I've got a one to two relationship. So I'm gonna take the moles I have of potassium carbonate and I'm gonna multiply it by two. Okay. Now I have moles of my HBr and I have a concentration. Remember, I can take my moles, divide it by my concentration and end up with my volume. So let's take this out. I have, I have 25 milliliters times one liter over a thousand milliliters. It gives me 0 0.02500 liters that I'm gonna multiply by my concentration, which is 0 0.540 moles per liter. This gives me my moles of K2CO3. Again, I've got 0.135 moles of K2CO3 and I have a two to one molar ratio. So I'm gonna take my moles of potassium carbonate, multiply it by two over one. This gives me 0 0.270 moles of HBr. I also know that my concentration of my HBr is 0.492 moles per liter. If I take my moles of HBr and I divide it by my moles per liter, this will give me 0 0.0560 liters or 56.0 milliliters. Are you seeing the general drift of what we're doing in using concentrations and volume to make solutions. Yes. Victoria, did you have a question? No. Itchy head? Yeah. Okay. What mass of sodium bromide will react with 37.09 milliliters of a 0.825 molar lead phosphate? Spencer. Yes. Do I have a way of making moles of either sodium bromide or lead phosphate? Uh, I think so. Okay. What do I have the ability to make moles of? Um, is it the... Um... The, the uh, what's it called? The, mol the molarity right there, the 0 0.825. I have the molarity. And what else do I have, Spencer? You have, the, you have the volume. I have the volume and I have the molarity. I can multiply the two together and I will get moles once I convert milliliters to liters. So I'm going to convert the milliliters to liters and then multiply that by my 0.825 moles per liter. This gives me the moles of my lead phosphate. Again, same steps in stoichiometry. 
find the moles of your unknown, then use the molar ratio to take your, I'm sorry, find the moles of known, then use your molar ratio to determine the moles of unknown. What's the ratio between sodium bromide and lead, phos lead, uh, lead two phosphate? One to six. One to six. So I used my volume and my concentration to get my moles of lead phosphate. I then multiply it by my molar ratio of six to one. This gives me 0.1836 moles of sodium bromide. What did the question ask me for? The mass. Okay. If I've got the moles of sodium bromide, can I get the mass? You can go from moles to grams. How? Uh, you take, um, sorry, my dog is very upset right now over God knows what. Probably because you're eating in front of him. Yeah, probably. Come on, Victoria. How do you go from how do you, you go the, from moles to grams? You take the moles, you times it by the molecular weight of what you need over one mole to get there we go. grams. There we go. We multiply the moles of, of lead two phosphate by six to one. We got the moles of sodium bromide. All we do then is multiply it by the molecular weight. So guys, all this information that you've had. We're compiling it now and we're putting layer on top of layer. We have another problem here. I got 13.11 milliliters of a 0 0.250 molar KCL. That's gonna react with 19.80 milliliters of a 0 0.531 molar silver nitrate. What mass of silver chloride will be formed? What kind of problem is this, guys? Limiting reactant. I've got a way to make moles of KCl. I got a way to make moles of AgNO3. So all I got to do is I got to figure out how much, uh, how much each of them will make of silver chloride. What's my first step? Leandre, Leandre. Yes. Do I have a way of making moles of KCl? It's a little bit unfair. You just popped in here, I know. Uh, yeah, I think so. Okay. Do you have a volume and do you have a concentration? Of KCl? Yes, yes. If you have a volume and a concentration, you can make moles of KCl. So the first thing you're going to do, you're going to take the 1311. You're going to turn that into liters. Uh, then once you get the 1311 changed into 0 0.013111 liters, we're going to multiply that by the concentration. We do that, we get... 0 0.00327 moles of KCl. I'm going to do the same thing, the same exact thing with the silver nitrate. Only I got 19.80 grams of that, or 19.80 milliliters of that. Again, I'm going to multiply that by one liter over a thousand milliliters and multiply that by the concentration. This gives me 0 0.01051 moles of silver chloride. Now, which one of these two results is smaller? KCL. The KCL, thank you. The amount of silver chloride that comes from the KCL is a smaller one. Therefore, the KCL was the limiting reagent. All I got to do then is take my moles from the limiting reagent, multiply it by my molecular weight. I have my grams of silver chloride. 
So all we're doing, guys, we're employing volume times concentration to get moles. That's the bottom line. We need to get moles of our known first so we can convert it into moles of our unknown. What volume of 0.984 molar phosphoric acid will react with 10.89 grams of calcium hydroxide? Do I have a way of getting moles of calcium hydroxide? Yes. Okay. Thank you, Victoria. Do I have a way of getting moles of phosphoric acid? No. I don't have the volume. So I got to, in this case, this is not a limiting reagent problem. It's just a straight stoichiometric problem. So what is the first step I do here? You take all the atomic weights from MHPO4. MHPO4? MH3PO4. Okay, how's that going to help me? You can find your, uh, like, the whole weight of it, so you can use that with the volume. What volume? That's what we're trying to find out. Can I, I determine moles from the problem that's given? Can I determine moles of phosphoric acid? I think he may have been a little confused with the M right by H3PO4. So the compound is H3PO4 and the M is for moles, correct? Uh, sorry, molarity. The M is, you're absolutely correct, Rosina. The M is the molarity concentration, but that's not the problem that I think Chase was dealing with. Was that you trying to answer the question, Chase? Yeah. Okay, Chase, do you see, I only have a concentration there. Mm -hmm. I don't have moles and I don't have liters. I can't manufacture this. I can't tell you how many moles of H3PO4 I have until I get the volume. But what can, Chase, what can I find the moles of? The CaOH2. I can take, I can, how am I gonna find moles of that, Chase? Um, you take the uh, CaOH and you find the, uh, the weight of it. What kind of weight? The molecular weight. Yep. And what am I gonna do with that? What am I gonna do with the molecular weight? <laughs> You're going to take the molecular weight and multiply it by 1 over 10, uh, 89 grams, or 10 over. You're going to take the 10.89, and you're going to multiply it by 1 over the molecular weight. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. Got to get this down. Did my screen go away? Did my screen go away? I was trying to admit somebody. Yeah. I was trying to admit somebody and I pushed a button I probably shouldn't have. Okay, where am I at? There we are. So I'm gonna take my mass of my calcium hydroxide, divide it by the molecular weight. This gives me 0 0.1470. Again, same thing as we did before. We have a two to three molar ratio. So I'm gonna put the two on top for the moles of phosphoric acid, three or moles of calcium hydroxide. This gives me 0 0.098 moles. Liters are equal to moles divided by molarity. I have my moles now. I divide that by my molarity. This gives me my liters. Questions, guys? Hopefully, I'll be able to make up some problems at the end of this that'll help us out a little more. But for right now, we got to get on to acids and bases.
Just a second. I got to see who this is. Who is Galaxy 8? I think that's Marie trying to get in. They're, they were having problems with the uh, SPC website. On Galaxy their S8. Okay. If we, if accidentally we get some porn on here i'm gonna blame galaxy s8 um can i get a visual <laughs> no, <I'm just> kidding. <laughs> i deserve that gate okay guys we're dealing with acids and bases <laughs> So we got to look at some of the properties and you already know about this. You already know some of these. You bite into a lemon, what's it taste like? Sour. Sour, that's because it has citric acid in it. Acids are gonna turn litmus red. They are corrosive. Acids are electrolytes. You can dissolve them in water and they will conduct current. Generally speaking, if you put an acid in water, you will get a pH less, less than seven. On the other hand, if we have bases, has anybody ever taken a painkiller, a narcotic? Yeah, sure. Do they taste nasty, Hunter? Yeah. Real bitter? Yeah. That's because narcotics generally employ opium or opioids. Opioids are basic in nature. They taste bitter. Bases turn litmus blue. Acids red, bases blue. Now, can anybody tell me the difference between corrosive and caustic? Oh, I was going to ask. Um... What, what does caustic mean? I know what corrosive is, but what is caustic? If you look up caustic in a dictionary, it says a corrosive substance. If you look up corrosive in the dictionary, it says a caustic substance. No, you're playing with me. No, I'm not. I swear to God, I looked up three different dictionaries. Basically, it's just... They, they, basically, what they do is they break down chemicals. And they do it in a very violent way. Generally speaking, if we are talking about bases, we just generally refer to them as being caustic. If we're talking about acids, it's corrosive. Bases are also electrolytes. Bases have a pH greater than seven. Bases feel slippery. Has anybody ever taken a bath? God, I hope so. <laughs> the soap, if you're putting soap on your body, it feels slippery because so soap is a base. Is it hydrophobic? No, actually it's not. It's the stuff within the soap, the uh, uh, fatty acids. Because basically in order to make soap, what you do is you boil up fats, animal fats, you boil those up to separate the, the fatty acid away from the triglyceride. And then you add uh, sodium in it somehow, and that makes what soap is. Acids react with bases to form a salt and water. We know this from our chemical reactions. They, form, they react with carbonates to make CO2. This is the volcano experiment. An acid plus any carbonate will release carbon dioxide. They react with active metals to form hydrogen. Bases, on the other hand, react with acids to form salt and water. Bases will react with CO2 to make carbonates. 
and they react with salts to form insoluble hydroxides. Just some of the reactions that are going on with acids and bases. Now, you need to know these definitions. A guy by the name of Arrhenius said an acid was something that produces H plus, and he said bases produce OH minus. That didn't solve all problems. So two guys by the name of Bronsted and Lowry said that acids accept uh, acids donate H plus, bases accept them. Again, this didn't solve all situations. So a guy by the name of Lewis came up with acids accept an electron pair, bases donate an electron pair. We're generally going to use the Bronsted Lowry definition. Lewis, Lewis definition you are going to use. You, if you're going on to organic chemistry, going on to organic chemistry, you will use the Lewis definition all the time. Arrhenius is kind of like the baby definition. We're using the Bronsted Lowry where we know that acids are going to donate H plus, bases are going to accept them. Further, further uh, definitions be, that where they're particularly used. Now, at neutrality, the moles of H3O plus or H plus equal the moles of OH minus. Do you note that I did not say the moles of acid or the moles of base? Why am I making this statement? All right, riddle me this Batman. What is the formula for sulfuric acid? Is that SO4? SO4, but... H2SO4? Minus. H2SO4. So if sulfuric acid is H2SO4, how many H's does sulfuric acid donate? Two? Two. Two. Okay. Now... What happens if you mix H2SO4 with KOH, potassium hydroxide? How many OHs does potassium hydroxide deliver? Four. Nope, KOH. That's the whole four. Just one? Just, Just one. one. So if I mix H2SO4 with KOH, at neutrality, the moles of H2SO4 are not going to be the same as the moles of KOH. But the moles of H plus are going to equal the moles of OH minus. That's because sulfuric acid will deliver two H's while OH will only deliver one OH. So I need twice as much KOH as H2SO4 in terms of moles. And generally speaking, when I'm doing this neutralization reaction, I'm mixing two ionic compounds. HCl is an ionic compound, and AOH is an ionic compound. When I put two ionic compounds together, I have a double displacement reaction. So the H reacts with the OH to make water. What is left is the sodium and the chloride. So I have sodium chloride that is left. Every acid-base reaction results in water and a salt. The salt are the ions that are left over.
So if I mix HCl with magnesium hydroxide, gate. I'm yeah. mixing HCl gate with MgOH2. What are my products going to be? Um, hold on, I gotta think this through. Um, <laughs> MgCl and HOH2. Not H H2O. H2O. It's just water, Faith. Okay. Okay. So if you're putting the H with the OH. And the MG is going to link with the CL. Now, Gaith, Gaith, you there, Gaith? I'm present. I mix sulfuric acid with mm -hmm. aluminum hydroxide. Okay. What are my products? Is it is it still H two? No, it's not, right? Because it's come on. Okay. A it's in H2. general, in general, I, I make mm -hmm. water, so you right. know what one of the products is going to be. Right. Okay, what is it? You said me, right? You're asking me? I'm asking you. Okay, H2O, right? What's and left? S-O-A-L. Put it the other way around, Keith. Okay? Always put the cation first. Okay, so it's going to be A-L, S-O. S-O what? Oh. <clears throat> um. What's the cat? Oh, What's four, the four. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. Sorry. Yeah. SO4. AL SO4. Yeah, okay. Now, here's another riddle. Does pure water conduct electrical current? Yes. Uh, uh, no. Probably not, because if you think <laughs> of, if you think about it, like I think about lightning striking a lake but if you think about it, a lake isn't pure water it has so many minerals dissolved into it that's the that's the whole thing it's oh. not the water that's conducting the current it's what's ever in the water like salt in the ocean exactly it's a very 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 weak electrolyte so if i take water it will break up into H plus and OH minus, but it does it to a very, very small degree. If I take a, if I take my glass of water here and I determine the concentration within this glass of water of H plus, that's going to be 10 to the minus seventh molar. In other words, 0. 0.000001 is the concentration of my H plus. Similarly, the concentration of my OH is 0. 0.000001. I multiply those two together and I come up with a number 10 to the minus 14. This is really, really getting me irritated. So each of the H plus concentration and the OH concentration is 10 to the minus seventh molar. This is neutrality because OHs equal H pluses. And at 25 degrees centigrade, neutrality has a pH of seven. Which brings us into definitions. pH's definition is negative, the concentration of my H plus. I know guys, I've been using H3O and H plus interchangeably. What really happens when we are dealing with this is, no, nope, stop that. What really happens is we have, oh,
H two O plus H stop O this acts in equilibrium to make H H3O plus plus OH minus. That is really what's happening in the auto ionization of water. So we're making this H3O, which is called a hydronium ion. Basically, I'm lazy, so I basically will Thank you. I will equate this with I'm going to call both of those the same thing. In actuality, this is really what's happening, but it's easy enough just to call it H plus. Now, by definition, pH is equal to negative the log of H3O concentration. So if the combination of H3O times the concentration of H3O times the concentration of OH minus is equal to minus 14, and they're both equal to each other because we're neutral, we are at the negative log of 10 to the minus seventh we have a pH of seven. If we have no H3O and it's all OH minus, then we have a pH of 14. If we have all H3O and no OH minus, we have a pH of zero. Because of this definition and the concentration of H3O times the concentration of OH minus, is equal to 10 to the minus 14th. Our pH scale is from zero to 14. Neutrality is seven. Now, I'm gonna go through this because not everybody in here has been through algebra. Not everybody knows how to deal with logs or what logs are. The log of a number is the number that you have to raise 10 to in order for that number to be equal to the individual number. Okay, the log of 100 is equal to two. What that means to you is that 10 raised to the second power is going to be equal to what the number is. The log of 0 0.0564 is equal to a negative 1.24. This means if I take 10 and raise it to negative 1.24, this will give me the number 0 0.0564. So if we're converting two logs, if you have the number, simply hit the log key and type in the number. 
Guys, if you don't have your calculators handy, I want you to go get them. Hit your log key. Then type in 0.349. Your answer should be 0.457. Am I correct? Yes. Yes. Not now, good. I want you to find your 10 raised to the X power. Wait, someone, I don't know who it was, but someone said it was negative. Yeah, I got negative. That's oh, not good. Too. Negative. Yeah, Maria, I got it first. Yeah, I got negative too. Okay, you're right. Logs, logs of numbers less than one are negative. You are correct. Who found that out? I know Victoria. Oh, I know Victoria sounded it out, but she wasn't the first one to say that. I think. It was oh, I think. Mariah. I think I said it. I think I said it for extra credit. I said. Okay, Megan. Somebody, come on! I think I we all saw that. Faith, you're lying your butt off. It was Mariah who said Mariah? it. Mariah. Yes. Yeah. Mariah. Yeah. Mariah, what's your last name? Lapel. Starts with L. Man, I can never get extra credit in this class. <laughs> That's because you cheat. <laughs> oh, I'm in HCC. That's why the hell I can't find it. Gotcha, Mar gotcha, Mariah. That's your fourth. Ooh, -wee. I think you're leading the way, Mariah. So yes, that you are correct. So what you're doing if you are converting the number to the to the log, all you have to do is type in log, type in the number, enter. That will give you your your log. Now. By the same token, find your 10 raised to the X power. There should be a button somewhere on your calculator. 10 raised to the X power. Type in negative 0.457. Your answer should be 0.349. I got my bad calculator here. All right. If you have the log, then what you have to do is you have to raise 10 to that power to determine the actual number. So basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna find the 10 raised to the X key on your calculator. Hit it, then type in the log number. and equals, and that should give you your number. So if I have negative 4.65 is equal to the log of some number, I take 10, raise it to the negative 4.65 power. This is equal to 10 raised to the log. Whenever you have 10 raised to the log, that cancels out as one. So I have 10 raised to the negative 4.65 is equal to X. My number is 2.23 E to the minus five. Are we understanding that? Are we understanding logs? All right, so. We're gonna, we're gonna relate this back to pH. Simple instructions. To get the H plus concentration from the pH. If I give you the pH, you can tell me what the H plus concentration is. Hit the 10 to the X button. Then input the negative value for pH, hit enter that will give you 
the concentration. What is the H plus concentration of an acid with a pH of 3.75? I want you right now to hit your, find your 10 to the X button, hit it. Then type in negative 3.75, enter. Are you getting 1.78 times 10 to the minus fourth? Yes. Wait, we're doing 10 to the negative 3.75, right? Correct. Okay, so I'm plugging in 10. And then negative 3.75. Yeah, now I have it. For some reason, it was giving me an error at first. Okay. All right, I want you to do, come on, these are not that hard. The problems are not that hard. All you got to do is find the 10 to the X button and type in the negative value of your pH. I give you a couple minutes to do this. I want you to do all three problems here. It keeps giving me errors. Uh, okay, Marie. Is that you, Marie? Yes. Okay, um, do you have a 10 to the X button? What type yes. of calculator do you have, Marie? Uh, TI-84. Okay, do you have a 10 to the X button? Yes. Okay, are you hitting, is it, is it kind of like a different color? Is it on the key or is it on the calculator itself? It's on the calculator. All right, so you have to hit the section function, second function. Yes, I did. Put a negative in front of the 3.40. Yeah, I have the same calculator and even it's giving me errors. Maybe we are not working the calculator right. You're gonna have to figure it out though by Tuesday. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. What's Tuesday? Your test. Oh, God. It's only nine problems, guys. <laughs> okay. Rosina, Marie, try typing in negative 3.40, then second function 10 to the X. Yeah, it's going to be 3.98, right? Should be times 10 to the minus 2 or something like that. I yeah, got 3.9. Yeah, negative 4. 3.98 to negative 4. Ooh. Okay. For number three, <clears throat> I got 0 0.0147. For that one, do you have to move the decimal over for some reason? Okay, you, you should have gotten 0 0.0147, Katie. 0 0.0147, yeah, 79. Yeah. It was on, yeah. So yours has a negative two, mine doesn't have E to Okay, anything. well, uh, that Katie. Yeah. 0.0147 is 1.47 times 10 to the minus two. Oh yeah, I guess. Okay. Oh, so you, you wouldn't leave it. You have to have like a. Either way, either way is proper. Okay. All right. So uh, for number two, when I typed it in, it gave me point like nine zeros and then one. So I can't tell. Is that going to be. Should have given you eight zeros and then the one. That's what I meant. Sorry, it gave me eight zeros in the one. Is that that would be that would be fine if you put that down on the test? I would okay. accept it. So, like, I if I can't see the one two because it cuts off, uh, 
I, was, I would still be okay. So like I put 1.00 e to the negative ninth. That's what you're saying, Victoria? Yeah. Yeah, because I can't, I don't see that either, so. Victoria, make your argument at the time, okay? Okay, that, all right. It, an angry no, no, if that happens box. in the test, make your argument at that time, okay? Okay, sounds good. All right, if you have the concentration and you want the pH, hit the log key, type in the concentration. What's gonna happen is you are going to get a negative number. All you gotta do is make that number positive. So if I want the pH of negative log, the concentration is 8.32 times 10 to the minus ninth. I hit my log key, type in 8.32 times 10 to the ninth. My answer is a negative 8.08. My pH, all I got to do is make that number positive, and I have the pH. And that's going to be on the test, correct? I'm not going to admit to anything, well, well, but I'm not saying you're I am not saying that you are incorrect. Okay, thank you. All right, now all you gotta do here, type your log key, type in the number that you're seeing here. Or in some cases, you might have to put the number in first. put the number in, then sometimes it's gonna call for you to put the number in first and then the log. Some calculators, you hit the log and then the number. You will get a negative number because all these concentrations are going to be very, very small numbers. To then take the pH, to make the pH out of that number, you just make it positive. So if you type in, log 4.21 e to the negative third, you should have gotten a negative 2.37, just the, to make it positive. Where, where's the button for the e part? Uh, Hunter, do you have, how do you do, how do you do scientific notation on your calculator? Like 10 to the, you know, yes. whatever power? Yes. Okay, so then just times 10 to the negative third power? Yes. Okay, that well, sounds good. Is it negative 2.38? It's neg yes. A Apple oh, Grace. Okay, negative 2.37571. Okay, yes. One second, Hunter. Apple Grace, it is negative 2.37, but remember, my rules tell you make the number positive. Okay, Apple okay. Grace? Okay pHs are always positive because it's negative the log. The log of the concentration will always be a negative number. So to get the pH, you're just taking a negative of a negative number. Do 3.95 e to the minus ninth, you should come up with 8.40. 7.23 e to the negative 13th, you should come up with 12.1. Questions about this? The important two slides, this one, how to get pH from the concentration, and the other one, how to get H plus from the pH. You're going to have to figure out your calculators. I'm not there. I don't, I'm sorry, I don't know how. You got a pH of an acid with an H plus concentration of 9.27 times 10 to the minus two. What is the pH? 
I don't have the answer. <laughs> I'll trust you. I approve. That's a mistake. I got that as well. I thank you. All right. Second problem. What is the H plus concentration of a base with a pH of 12.45? Uh, I got. It has to. It has to be negative, right? That's what you said. Take. So, it'd be negative three point. No, 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 Victoria. When you're doing this one, you are taking ten raised to the power. The power oh. is going to be the negative pH. So it would be three point four five times ten to the negative thirteen. Somebody verify that. That's what I got. Sounds I got good three, to me. I got a 3.54. Yeah, that's what I meant. 5.4. Five, four. Five, four. Oh. No, he's right. Dyslexia. Okay. okay. Now, the last, I think this is the last problem we're going to have to deal with. At least I hope so. At least I hope so. And that is titration. What happens? What happens when we are doing a titration? We have the volume and we have the concentration of either the acid or the base. We don't know what the concentration of the other one is, but we can carefully monitor it so that we know how much volume is put in there. What you have to realize is because my coefficient is one to one for HCl and NaOH, at the equivalence point, when I'm neutral, my moles of HCl equal my moles of NaOH. Because moles are equal to molarity times the volume. My molarity of my acid times my liters of acid are going to be equal to my molarity of base times my liters of base. With a caveat, ladies and gentlemen, this equation only works if in the balanced chemical equation of your acid-base reaction, the coefficient in front of the acid is the same number as the coefficient in front of the base. I know that's a lot of mumble jumble there, but you gotta understand that. If I have got a balanced chemical equation and I look at the coefficient in front of my acid and the coefficient in front of my base, if they are equal, I can use the equation molarity of my acid times my liters of my acid is equal to the molarity of the base times the liters of the base. If I use calcium hydroxide, react that with sulfuric acid, I do this. My coefficient in front of my calcium is going to be one. My coefficient in front of my sulfuric acid is going to be one. So I can use MAVA equals MBVB. However, if I mix phosphoric acid with magnesium hydroxide, the phosphoric acid delivers three H's, the magnesium hydroxide delivers two OHs. The H's do not equal the OHs. I can't use MAVA equal MBVB. What I have to do in this circumstance, I have to figure out the moles of my known by multiplying my 
concentration by my volume. And then I have to take the number of moles and I will be dividing it by the volume of my other entity. The key is if my OHs equal my H pluses, I can use MAVA equal MBVB. If they don't, I have to go through the mole process, the, the uh, molar ratio, and then convert it to liters. Let's see some examples. 16.25 milliliters of a, of a 0.251 molar sodium hydroxide solution was used to titrate 25.63 milliliters of acetic acid. Note, my number of OHs in my base equal the number of Hs in my acid. I can use MAVA equal MBVB. So all I have to do here is take my volume of my NaOH, multiply it by one liter over 1,000 milliliters, multiply that by the concentration. This is going to equal 25.63 milliliters times one liter over 1,000 milliliters times the concentration that I don't know. Anybody Professor, see? I have a question. One second, and let me point out something, then you can ask, ask your question. Anybody see a term that's the same on the left and right of the equal sign? What are we multiplying the milliliters by? Liters. Over? Molarity. No, no. What are Sorry. We... I want to know a term that is the same on the left side of this equal side and the right side. So one liter over a thousand milliliters? Absolutely. Can you guys see that these numbers are the same? Mm -hmm. Those numbers are the same, so I don't have to bother with them. If I have it on the right side and the left side, they're going to cancel out. So I can literally just take my milliliters of my base, multiply it by my concentration, divide it by the milliliters of my acid, and I will get my concentration. So who have I lost right now? Me a little bit. Yeah, I, I'm confused as well. I, I tried right. to do the one in the in the survival guide, and I'm I'm very lost. Well, I'm pretty sure this is the same problems I was working on in the homework yesterday, and uh, the solutions or uh, what is it homework nine? And uh, I don't. It, it's a lot easier than like it looks here. You just I would just go to Khan Economy. They kind of explain it good too, like on the, you know, outside of the lecture. But essentially, you know, you're just solving for MA on the right side. Okay. First thing you got to look, you got to analyze the problem. I got to look at what I'm dealing with. I'm dealing with a base and I'm dealing with an acid. The number of OHs in my base equal the number of H pluses in my acid. That justifies the formula MAVA equals MBVB. So all I have to do is plug the values in. My molarity of my acid, that's what I'm trying to figure out. So MA is unknown. I have 25.63 milliliters of my acid. That goes in as VA. That is equal to 
my molarity at my base, 0.251 molar, times my volume on my base, 16.25 milliliters. So if I take my 16.25, multiply that by my 0.251, then divide it by my 25.63 milliliters. That will give me my concentration of my acid. So can we can we do the one in the survival guide real quick, just so I make sure I understand how to, Okay. I got this right? You're going to have to tell me what it is, sure. but. Nah. And show home. New slide. Okay. What's what's the problem? A 25 milliliter sample of HBr is titrated with 34.21 milliliters of a 1.5 molarity solution of NaOH to endpoint. What is the molarity of the HBr solution? Okay, Victoria. Mm -hmm. Do my H pluses equal my OH minuses? Yes. That's the case. I can use MAVA is equal to MBVB. So would it be to set it up, would it be, um, I guess, 30? No, wait. Would it be 34.21 milliliters times 1.5 molarity to get whatever we get? It's equal to MA times what? What's uh, the one, volume of your? 25. So hold on. I'm going to do math. So is it 2. Point zero five or two point one I guess if you wanted to force two sig figs. Is that don't, it? Don't you have the answer? So you it's two point one. Yeah. Sounds good to me. I didn't do that, the math. I didn't do the calculation, but that sounds good to me, Victoria. That's it? That's it. Oh. Okay. I'm good. Thank you. Again, note, when you're doing a conversion of any volume to liters, whatever you're multiplying the one side by, you're going to multiply the other side by it as well. So the conversions go out. As long as the label of the volume is the same on the left and the right, you can use quarts on left and right. You can use ounces on left and right, and you don't have to convert it because whatever you use to convert it on the left, you're gonna use that to convert it on the right. Another problem here. I have 15.95 milliliters of a 0.354 molar solution of sulfuric acid. This was neutralized by 45 milliliters of sodium hydroxide. What is the molarity of the sodium hydroxide? I got H2SO4, two H's, NaOH, one OH. I cannot use MAVA equal MBVB. Does everybody understand that? Mm -hmm. I have to use the long method to do this, okay? I'm going to need to convert what I know to moles. I'm going to need to use the molar ratio between the acid and the base to turn my moles of known into moles of unknown. Then I am going to divide my moles of unknown by the volume of the unknown in liters to get my final concentration. My balanced chemical equation, H2SO4 plus 2NaOH yields two waters and Na2SO4. 
I know what, how many moles of my sulfuric acid I have because I have the volume and I have the concentration. I turn my milliliters into liters. That gives me 0 0.01595 liters. I take that amount of liters, multiply it by my concentration. This gives me my moles of H2SO4. I have my moles of H2SO4. Second step, turning moles of known into moles of unknown. I want the moles of NaOH. So I multiply my moles of sulfuric acid by two moles of NaOH over one mole of sulfuric acid. This will give me 0 0.0113 moles of NaOH. Last step, I want the concentration of my sodium hydroxide. What you have to realize is that all the moles of the sodium hydroxide are within the volume that was used to titrate the acid. So I have 0 0.0113 moles of NaOH. I'm going to simply take my milliliters of NaOH, turn it into liters, and then I'm going to divide my moles by my liters. This gives me my concentration. Questions? If you do not want to work, if you don't trust yourself for the MAVA equals MBVB, then follow this. This will never lead you astray. Use the, again, three steps. You're going to use the volume of your known sample multiplied by its molarity to get moles of your known sample. You will use the molar ratio determined by the balanced chemical equation. You will use that molar ratio to turn your moles of known into moles of your unknown. Then simply, you will turn the volume of your unknown into liters, and you will divide the moles of your unknown by the liters, and that will give you your final concentration. I have 25.50 milliliters of phosphoric acid that was neutralized by 15.35 milliliters of 3.2 moles per liter or 3.2 molar solution of calcium hydroxide. What is the molarity of my H3PO4? I got a balanced chemical equation here. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find the moles of my known. My known is determined because I have a volume of my calcium hydroxide and I have a concentration of my calcium hydroxide. I'm going to take my volume, turn it into liters, multiply that by the concentration. That gives me 0 0.0491 moles of calcium hydroxide. My molar ratio, I have two moles of phosphoric acid for every three moles of calcium hydroxide. So I'm multiplying my calcium hydroxide moles by two over three. This gives me my moles of phosphoric acid. I simply divide that by my volume of phosphoric acid that's been turned into liters. And I end up with the concentration 1.28 molar. Hunter, you're rubbing your head like you're getting a headache. I already had a headache. That's why I'm wearing this little ice headband thing. What is it you're not understanding? Just too much uh, wants to process. So is it if you don't want to use the MA, uh, whatever it was, um, we you just don't... have to we just have to use stoichiometry to figure it out. Oh, okay. That's all. 
It's just that's a shortcut. Yeah, I just I just know there's just like three or four methods to solve these kind of like math problems. I just like to write down the formulas and then like when I go in, actually just apply like that to it. You know what I mean? That's what I'm saying, guys. Just trust this then. Don't even think of the MA VA equal MBVB. Don't even worry about it. That is a shortcut method. You don't have to use it. Just do this. Use the volume of your known times the concentration of your known to get the moles of your known. Use the balanced equation to find the molar ratio and take the moles of your known, multiply it by the molar ratio to get the moles of your unknown. Then your last step, all you got to do is find the volume of your unknown, turn it into liters, and divide that into the moles you just determined. Strategy. Find either the acid or base that you can make moles out of. In other words, find the acid or base that has both the volume and the concentration. Multiply your milliliters by one liter over a thousand milliliters to get the liters. Multiply your liters by the concentration to get your moles. Then use the molar ratio to get the moles to get the moles of the other reactant. Once you have the other reactant moles, turn its volume into liters and divide by the liters. You have 33 and a half milliliters of KOH. It was titrated with 10.75 milliliters of 3.20 moles per liter sulfuric acid. What is the molarity of the KOH? Jennifer. Yes. Do we have a way of making moles of sulfuric acid or KOH? And which is it? Yes, uh, the sulfuric acid. And how are you going to do that, Jennifer? You're going to change the milliliters to liters and then divide it by the 3.02. Um, not divide it. Not divide it. Times it, sorry, yes. Change it into liters and then times it by the molarity, which is 3.20 moles over liters and get the moles. Okay, we've got the moles of our sulfuric acid now. Hunter? What am I going to do now that I've got the moles of my sulfuric acid? We need to, uh, I was going to say divided by the liters, but no, I think you're supposed to put it over the, the whole solution, right? Hunter, this is straight stoichiometry. Three steps in stoichiometry. Find the moles. What's the second step? Um, I'm sorry, I'm drawing, I'm drawing a blank here. No problem. Somebody. You have to do the molar ratio. I have to do the molar ratio. Once I get the moles of sulfuric acid, I'm going to multiply the moles of sulfuric acid. Molecular weight, right? No, we're not dealing with molecular weights here. We don't have any, we, we don't need molecular weights here, Hunter. As a matter of fact, it's a simpler problem. Hunter, can you see I'm taking the volume of my sulfuric acid and multiplying it by my concentration? This is giving me moles. Yeah. I, I don't that. need to I don't need to mess around with the 98 grams per mole for sulfuric acid. I've already got moles. Okay. Now I'm going to take my moles of sulfuric acid, Hunter. All right. And multiply it by the molar ratio. What is the molar ratio? between KOH and sulfuric acid? That's uh, one to one, right? What's the number in front of KOH? Well, two, and then the number in front of SO4 is two. No, it's not. H2SO4 is the formula for sulfuric acid. Is there any number in front of the H2SO4? One. So what's the molar so, ratio? So it's a two to one. Two to one. 
So I'm gonna take my moles of sulfuric acid, multiply it by two moles KOH to one mole sulfuric acid. And this is going to give me 0 .0, 0 0.688 moles of KOH. I simply divide it by the volume of the KOH in liters and that will give me my molarity. We're at time guys. I only had a couple more problems anyway. If you, uh, I only actually have one more acid base problem anyway. The last problem here was just a general, general problem. Where are you having problems here, guys? We'll take five minutes to decompress here. Cute you know, dog, gonna, Katie. Katie, you know cute dog. Say, I feel like this would look a lot better, like to the eye, because like when we were looking at these slideshows, like all these slides, it's hard to see where like I'm dividing and multiplying here, especially with the dividing part. Like I've seen other examples, like in in the homework and, and in the book, where it's like it's like a little bit more spaced apart. You know what I mean? Like when I'm doing them on here, they look, I don't know, it's like harder to read than when I'm doing them other places. I, I can buy that Hunter. I can buy that. And the only thing I can say in my defense is that it's a lot easier to put the slash in there. I mean, I know, I know that like when you're typing it out and stuff like that, but it's like, I don't know. Uh, Hunter, the only thing I can tell you is it's a lot easier for me to put the slash there. Yes, I, I realize if I put. When I see something with like this kind of. I like, understand, like, Hunter. I understand. But you have to understand that it's not easy doing. Yeah, I get it. I get it. It's fine. It's not easy my doing this and then. No. Nope. That. Yeah, no, I, I know the, the program, it's quite annoying sometimes. What was that answer? Uh, it's like three point. Yeah. So I got to do it again. Hold on. No, nope. I got, ah, oh, crap. Point zero three three five zero liters. Point zero. Three five, three, five, three, 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 five. three five zero. That's what you're dividing it by. Yeah, it oh. should be 20. 20.5, 20. 20. sorry. So it's that? Yeah. Okay. How do you saying this makes more sense to you? Yeah, when it's written like that, it's like. I don't know. It's it's way 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 better to distinguish distinguish what part of the the expression you're one you're dealing with. But I what will, I will endeavor, Hunter. I will endeavor. I will try and look at my slideshows, and I will try and change them to this. Yeah, I mean it's no big deal because like I can practice yeah. doing it this way, like when I'm not in class. But it's all it's okay. All right, uh, guys, I'm throwing it open to you. Where are you having, are, are you, are you understanding this? What's going on with you? What don't you understand about this? If you can't articulate what you're not understanding, it's kind of hard for me to help you. Katie, you good? Victoria, Jennifer? Yeah, I'm good. Let's see who else is in here. Mariah. Professor, is there, pro professor, is there like a practice test we can kind of practice or practice whatever? Oh, yeah. What's up with the review? I, I didn't review. Think yeah. I about that. What review? Saying, is there going to be a review for this test or anything? Like a practice test we can take? There's a, there, there, I will tr endeavor to try and do a practice test. Hunter, the test is on Tuesday. Do we have any classes between now and Tuesday? No, there's not, but um, 
I'm, I'm sorry, here. Hunter, you have to understand, I have to get through a, a modicum of material. I still have to get through gas laws, Vesper, and uh, and quantum mechanics. That's going to be at least five lectures. I would okay. love to have been able to give you a review on this. Sometimes you got to do it yourself. I'm sorry. Professor, um, for those who come home late on Tuesdays, do um, we I, it's going to be eight to eight. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. I will give you two hours to take the test. Question. Is it proctor? Yes. Wait. Yeah, Professor. I'm sorry. I got cut off with my Wi-Fi. So you said it's due Tuesday. You no, know, I get off at work at, uh, late on a Tuesday. Okay. Mm. What is late? Well, like, well, I mean, like, I get off that time for a class, but by the time I get home, it's like six o'clock. All right, I just told you, Kate. I'm giving you two hours for the test, and I'm giving you from eight to eight. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I didn't hear you. My Wi-Fi cut off. Then. Okay. Cool. Okay. Okay. What, what else, guys? When, when is homework? Uh, homework nine, June. I'm sorry. I can't. You're cutting out. Homework nine. When? When is? When is it due? Homework nine, it's due the same day as the test, I believe. Ah, uh, okay. Thank you. Is it out of 100 points like usual? 125. It's always out of 125. I see. I'm trying to find, that's a meeting. Uh, is it all right if I uh, leave the class? Yeah. Are we done? We're done. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Okay. Have a nice day. Have a nice day. Any right. other questions, guys? We'll see you guys. Thank you. I will, I will, try, I will try and put a practice test up for you. All right. Thank you, Professor. All right. Thanks, thank professor. you, Professor. Yeah. Take care, guys. Bye. I'll see professor. some of you. I will see some of you in a half an hour. Um, professor? Yep. Yeah. Um, how many questions are on the test? Uh, nine. There are going to be nine word problems so there there are no multiple choice no multiple choice faviana these are all okay. going to be all going to be problems like okay. i will i will give you a chemical equation and say you have this many grams of this chemical how much of that chemical can you make that would be okay. a tim, that would be a typical question thank you Marie, Jennifer? Yeah, I, I just want to uh, let you know something. Um, I wanted to let you know that you do really well with the, the PowerPoints as to the best of your ability over a Zoom class. <laughs> so I just. <laughs> uh, let's see. I want to make sure before I say anything. OK. Uh, I'm sorry. I thought that was rather ridiculous. But I, I, <laughs> I'm i uh, 23 in July, and I've taken college since 2016 I just and I know they're I mean it's, it's college class like I don't know if anyone else in the class feels that way at the same time too like I understand like if you don't understand something then that's fine but you have you gave us all these different resources the the survivor guide all that extra homework and even when you do the homeworks online it gives you them over again to practice thank so you I, Jennifer that's just my opinion I just feel like it's it's better like Thank, thank you very much, Jennifer. Uh, <laughs> believe it or not, sometimes when I get a barrage like that, uh, mm -hmm. I sit there and wonder, what have I done? No, you do really well. I mean, like I said, you're doing it over Zoom. You're doing it with PowerPoint, and it is very hard to, I mean, everyone else can also just sit there and write it out themselves as well the way they want to. So. Are you understanding this? Very. Yeah, the only thing I, I'm a little tripped up on was, a, I think, part of the empirical formula stuff, but I understood why I got them wrong in the last quiz, but okay. that was fine. But yeah, no, I understand it. I'm, I'm, I'm really good at math, so. <laughs> good. I, I'm happy, Jennifer. Yeah, I'm just not, I just, I feel bad. I, I was like. And it, believe it or not, this is appreciated. Yeah, thank you. I, I appreciate that, too, as well. You have a good night and good luck. You have a good night, too. Thank you.